Professor Nasiuma and uh, the AIU uh, family, my good friend Karen Wakoli and the ELF family, the Ford Foundation team, all our development partners who are present, and leaders from our various counties who are gathered here today. Good afternoon. Uh, may I first confess that, uh, as our good brother from Kericho mentioned here, that youth is not forever and it keeps fading. I was one of those people who was a youth once and who was fighting for generational change in our leadership. But joining our young people here and the youth from different counties today, I'm very grateful that he provided a second category of those of us who are not exactly youth, but are youthful at heart. <laughs> so may I say that I belong to the second category of those who are youthful at heart. But I'm very, very pleased to be here and to join you. And just to listen to you and the ideas that we have shared here today. And I must thank Professor Nasiuma and uh, the African International University for hosting us at this great Pan-Africanist institution. It's my first time here, but I'm very, very grateful to be part of uh, an institution that has a great history. And to be able to meet the young people from different corners of our country who have come here from different counties to talk about devolution. And today, as I came, I brought with me some little present for each one of you. There's a little book that I will be requesting uh, each one of you takes home with you. It is called Jukumulangu, and it's about devolution, a simplified form. It's part of a civic uh, education program that uh, we have uh, been uh, working on with our development partners. And I would urge that you, you take a copy with you and that uh, through uh, your organization and other counties, we will be able to give you more materials that will help us in ensuring that we enhance accountability in our counties through civic education and having an informed uh, citizenry in our country. So please, when you get one, uh, uh, take time to go through and uh, would want you to have more as we come to the counties. We've been going around universities. I think uh, I addressed the University of Nairobi recently. And uh, this is the second university professor I'm coming to, and I'm very happy that uh, you're the second one to host us. We will also be going to uh, Moi and uh, Masinde Muliro. We'll be going to Maseno. We'll be going to Jomo Kenyatta, KU, to ensure, and Pwani University, to ensure that we reach all the young people in our country to be able to bring them on board the devolution ship. Na kwa meli ya ugatuzi, hatutaki vijana wetu wawe abiria, tuataka muwe mabaharia. Kuna tofauti kati ya kuwa abiria na kuwa baharia. So we do not want the young people of this country to be passengers aboard the devolution ship, we want you to be navigators, to be with us on the steering wheel of the devolution vehicle. And that's why I must appreciate Ford Foundation for teaming up with the ELF team and my friend Karen to give an opportunity to young people to come together to know their role and to also go back home to make a difference in the leadership of their counties and in the leadership of our country. And today, meeting at this great Pan-Africanist University, uh, we're also reminded of uh, our great Pan-Africanist leaders. Many of them, when you look at our history, were young people just like yourselves. Of course, they lived in different times when uh, a few people met somewhere in Berlin and they decided 
to subdivide Africa, and they started a scramble for Africa somewhere in Berlin. And they were able to divide Africa uh, alongside the colonial borders that we have and to colonize Africa. But also there were young leaders who emerged during that time and who said no to colonization and who fought to free Africa from the colonial shackles. I was listening to Margaret uh, from Ford Foundation speak about the year 1959 when there was a conference of Africans discovering Africa. One of the youngest and most brilliant leaders from our country, Tom Boyer, that year uh, made a great speech. He, he had traveled abroad and he was interviewed. I'm sure he had gone to attend the conference that Margaret was talking about. And he was interviewed by these Muzungus and first of all they were very shocked at how learned uh, Tom Boyer was, how fluent and coherent he was in his speech, in his thinking. And uh, at the time, there had been a conference in Accra, Ghana. And they were asking Boyer uh, uh, what the conference was about, what their intentions were, whether they were going to use violence to fight for freedom. And uh, um, Boyer said the difference between the conference that we had as Africans was to unite Africa, to free Africa. But the conference that was in Berlin was to divide Africa, to colonize Africa. And Tom Boyer and other young leaders came back home and they fought to make Africa free. We had leaders like uh, Samora Machel. We had uh, leaders like uh, Nyerere, Kwame Nkrumah, Mzejo Mokenyata. Nelson Mandela, Biko, these were all at the time very young people just like yourselves. But they had a great vision for their continent and for their countries. And they came out to fight to free Africa. Today, as we speak, a lot of water has gone under the bridge. I think uh, uh, things have changed. This continent that was once looked at as a dark continent that uh, was poor, and full of disease and conflict, today is one continent that is admired across the world. And anywhere you go in most forums today, there is this theme about Africa rising. And in all the conferences, people who looked at Africa differently are now looking at Africa positively. And they are saying Africa is rising. And uh, may I say, if Africa is rising, Kenya, your country, is the rising star of Africa. That I want you to know today. All you need to do is just go around and listen to the discourse in all international forums. And amongst the top five countries in Africa, they will mention South Africa, they will mention Kenya, sometimes Nigeria, and uh, they will talk about Cairo. But Kenya remains one of uh, the rising stars of Africa. In East Africa, we have the largest economy, but also we are amongst the fastest growing economies in Africa and in the world. What makes Kenya unique and why Kenya is being celebrated across the world is because of the choices we made in 2010. When we promulgated a new constitution, one of the most progressive constitutions in the world. We earned the respect of the world. And I remember President Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, once he was making a speech about evolution, and he said, few countries in Africa, and indeed the world, have been able to make such dramatic and such radical changes to their governance system. And fewer still have been able to do it peacefully and without much fuss. Yet Kenya in 2010 was able to do that and to actually rewrite their entire uh, 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 constitution and change the system of governance from a centralized system to a decentralized system, a devolved system, where power and resources were actually given to the uh, counties. Now, 
this today, as I sit at the Ministry of Devolution, has become a case study for political scientists across the world. They come to ask us, Kenya, how were you able to do this in just five or six years? And there are many African countries who are looking up to us who want to actually come and see how they can also change their system of governance so that they can embrace what Kenya is doing. All this is something to celebrate because those of you who come from the counties know that you can see changes in your own counties. Some counties like Turkana, I know that people used to travel over uh, 300 kilometers all the way to Eldred Moy Rifara Hospital just to get a CT scan. People would travel all the way from Mandera to Kenyatta uh, National Hospital just for dialysis. Today as we speak, you can go to any county and their referral hospitals and we've had for the first time a CT scan in Turkana. So Kenyans who used to travel hundreds of kilometers at great cost and mostly at great peril because the, the, the roads were not that good, can be able to enjoy the fruits of devolution in their counties because of uh, 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 the choices you made in 2010 uh, to change the system of governance. Today, as we speak for the first time, a place like Wajia, for 50 years that had never seen a tarmac road, there were children who were born who had never seen a tarmac road up north, who are today able to see tarmac roads and uh, see changes that they had never experienced before. But it is not without challenges. As we speak, the greatest challenge that is facing devolution and our national development is the challenge of corruption. I'm so happy Karen has spoken here very passionately. The other leaders have spoken here that you are asking yourselves, how can we do things differently? And this is where you come in as young people. In 2009, we had the Kenya We Want conference. And at that time, Kenyans came together. And in the words of Prophet Isaiah, they said, come, let us reason together. They had a very candid talk. And they asked, what is it that bedevils our country? And there were two things, tribalism and corruption. That was endemic at the time. And Kenyans came together and said, we must fight these two things. Now, I would agree with you that the objects of devolution under Article 174 and 175 was to devolve resources and power to the people. But after six years, the reality is that as we devolved resources, we also devolved corruption. In your counties, it is very, very important that you work with us as young people to see how we can fight this cancer of corruption. It will only work if you are able to be vigilant to be aware of your rights under the Constitution. And what I have given you is something that uh, went through a great and uh, very wide uh, stakeholder process. And we launched it recently. It's the Jukumu Langu project to make the citizen more aware of their rights, more aware of uh, their duty. So all we need to do is to say, yes, the youth of Kenya to Naweza and to marry that with the Jukumulangu. Na to seme to Naweza Timiza Jukumu Langu. And it starts with you holding your governor accountable, your MCA. You must know your rights and be able to be vigilant in your counties. We want to see how we can enhance accountability in our counties. It is by putting the citizen at the center of devolution. And most of our citizens, as a professor has said, the youngest uh, populations are actually in Africa. And Kenya has actually the largest uh, 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 youth population 
You are talking of almost 70 percent. The majority of the people in our counties are young people. The majority of uh, the people in our counties are women. So we need to see how we can get the youth and the women at the center of devolution. We must also see how we can enlighten these women and the youth so that they know their rights and they are able to hold their leaders to account. If we are able to do the two things, we will be able to succeed and we will be able to uh, uh, realize the dream of devolution that we intended when we devolved uh, our resources and power to the, to the region. So today, I want to say that uh, it starts with you finding time to know that it is your right as the resources come to your county, to know how much money has come to your county, to be involved in the planning so that when we have a CIDP, a County Integr Integrated Development Plan, you are part of that plan. You are the awareness of the shoe, you know where it pinches, you know your priorities. So whatever your input is must be reflected in those plans. But you will not actually have uh, your input uh, included in the plans if you do not participate in those processes. Many of the young people are out there, they are angry, they are hungry, they are jobless, and they are hopeless. This is a very dangerous uh, scenario, and it is something that we need to address together. But from the theme that you have given yourselves today about putting the youth at the center of devolution, moving from noise to voice, I cannot think of any more uh, apt uh, theme than the one you have chosen. And mine is to challenge you today to stop whining and start winning. You can start winning by participating in these processes, by ensuring that you agitate for your rightful share. 30% of all public procurement is reserved for you, both at the national and at the county level. So I'm here to also urge you that find your voice. Let us hear your voice. Stop the noise and let us hear your voice. Stop whining and start winning tenders. Start winning. You can do it. Can we? No, say it like Barack Obama. Yes, we can. Can we? You can find your voice, and I want to thank ELF and the Ford Foundation for giving the youth this platform to find your voice. And we want from the Ministry of Devolution to hear your voices across the 47 counties. We'd like to hear your voice when we are launching the CIDP of Transoya County. We'd like to hear your voice when that budget is being passed by your county assembly because you had time. I was at the University of Nairobi and asked students who are full of the conference, how many of you have participated in the budget making process? None of them. No, they didn't have the time to even find out when does the budget cycle start. They did not bother to go uh, and uh, participate. They have no idea what was budgeted. And how many of you have looked at your CIDP, your County Integrated Development Program? Okay, in, let me ask you. I was talking about Nairobi University. Let, 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 let's see uh, ELF here. Okay, how many in this room uh, genuinely uh, have a copy of their CIDPs for their counties? Uh huh, this is impressive. Almost uh, 60%. How many of you participated in the budget making process? Not genuinely, uh, if you participated. Thank you. This is encouraging, but if we can have more young people participating in those budget making processes, ensuring that the priorities of your counties are captured, it will be a, a success story for us as far as the journey of devolution is concerned. Why am I asking this? Are there people from Makwene here? 
Yes. Now, Makweni is one of the leading examples of uh, public, effective public participation. And I think uh, Professor Kibudam, Kibwana, who was my professor of law at the University of Nairobi, has done very well. Mukirudi Nyumbani Mwambie Mwalimwangu Hongera. He's doing a good job in Makweni. He has devised a very good public participation uh, uh, program and would like to see that replicated in the, in the other counties so that the citizen is at the heart of uh, decision making uh, in the devolved system of governance. That is very, very important. And uh, we took to Makweni other governors from your counties. Peer to peer, we went to see how Makweni is doing things differently. And we were shocked that in Mokweni County, there is a hospital, maternal hospital, that was constructed with just 135 million shillings. 135 million. From foundation to roofing to equipping, that hospital was opened by the First Lady recently. And it's fully equipped and operational at less than 200 million shillings. Those of you who are here, I know of a county that has used almost 1 billion shillings, and that referral hospital for six years is not operational. <laughs> Yet in Mokweni, 135 has given us a hospital. Ask yourselves, go back home and ask yourself what your money has been doing in your counties. I know of a county where 135 million shillings, and we are talking about money devolved, was used to build a governor's mansion. Now, if you come from that county, and I think some of you are here, <laughs> you have something to worry about how your money is being utilized. A man and his wife and three children, those are five people, <laughs> occupying a very prestigious mansion that cost the same as a hospital in Makweni. Five people in one county living a luxurious life in a ten-bedroom house. Well, I don't know how they occupy it all, and they're only five. Yet, in Mokweni, you have a hospital that is benefiting thousands of people for the same amount of money. Does that make sense to you? But this starts with you holding your leaders to account, telling them this is not our priority. This is what is our priority. What you have put here is not. You must get hold of your MCA so that if they are to go to the county assembly to pass that budget, it must be reflective of your priorities and your input. So this is what devolution is all about, and we have devolved this power to you. In ancient Greece, where we got the word democracy is from two Greek words, demos meaning people, and Christ meaning rule. They rule by the people. So you cannot, in a democracy, sideline the people and call that a democracy. You cannot. You cannot have the people, and particularly the youth who are the majority of our population, remaining bystanders and call that a democracy. You cannot ignore 70% of your population and make decisions and still say you have a democratic society. And uh, the great philosopher Aristotle once said that liberty and equality to be seen in a democracy is about all people, all persons being involved to the utmost in their leadership. 
So we must involve you, the young people, who are the majority in our counties and in our country, and involve the women in those decision-making processes for us to call ourselves the democratic state that we are, the democratic republic under Article 4 of our Constitution. Article 1 of our Constitution says all sovereign power belongs to the people. Are you the people? Yes. Say, we are the people. You are, you are the people to decide. But if you also ignore your power, and I was very touched by that first speaker who said there are many officers, starting from the president to the deputy, to the ministers, to the governors, the senators, MPs, MCS, women reps, but the most powerful office is the office of the citizen. Because our constitution vests all sovereign power in the citizen. That citizen under Article 1 is the one who delegates that power to us, the leaders of the national and the leaders of the county. And you have the powers to hire and fire. That's why I would agree uh, with my colleague, my friend, who said that you as a young people must also take interest in the leadership of, uh, of your counties and your country. So that we stop the noise of uh, just cheering people and we find our voice in, the, in those county assemblies. We'd like to see more women, more young people in our county assemblies. Can you? Can you? Munaweza hamwezima. Now, if you say that the MCA at the case of Vivi, how it is done, an MCA is a legislator, a very powerful legislator. And uh, with your degree, you can go back and make a great difference in your county as an MCA. In your county assemblies, billions will pass through there. And do not look at that job of an MCA. As, you see, your case is a councillor. An MCA ni mbunge wa bunge la county. Sijui kama tunaelewa. An MCA is just like an MP because an MP has several wards but MCA has one. So you can make a big difference in our county assemblies, you can make a big difference in our national assemblies and in our senate. Please go back home knowing the power you hold and the difference you can make in the governance of your country. So that is all I wanted to say to you and uh, to thank you very much and to say uh, uh, to Professor Aseka, I was very, very uh, uh, touched. I wish I met you earlier uh, because I, uh, I just started my PhD uh, uh, course at the University of Nairobi uh, for a doctorate of law. But that course you talked about, a PhD in uh, in the leadership and governance is very, very attractive. I, I wish I knew about it before. I, I would have actually enrolled for that one. But it's very attractive, and I would want to encourage those of you who have masters to consider that, because as Karen said, I think we have a problem in our leadership. And uh, I agree with a good professor that uh, instead of uh, statesmanship, I think we have uh, a lot of uh, demagoguery, he called it. <laughs> so we have more demagogues than more statesmen. Nikweli is equal. So what Africa is short of, may I conclude by saying that what Africa is short of are not leaders. I think what Africa is short of is integrity in our leadership. I think it's a question of integrity. And I want to agree with you as young people because you are the best hope of our country. You can change this country if you are able to fight the two evils of corruption and tribalism. We can change our country. You are the fresh blood that we can actually inject in our national veins and in our county veins and change our country and our counties.
that is possible, and I want you to know that uh, you are the best hope for our country. As you go back to our counties, please take your role seriously uh, and let us engage as we come, because I'll be coming around the counties. We see how that can be done. And as we fight corruption, please, may you be our watchtowers for devolution and against corruption. May you also be the whistleblowers. When you see an example of what I've given here today, 200 million being misused, that would have changed the lives of your people in your county. Uh, please make noise about it. You, 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 in fact, you don't need to make noise. You have a voice now through this institution and other institutions. Let us hear your voice, and we will uh, act on it. And lastly, for the war against corruption, we want you to be part of that war. Our president has declared war against corruption. He's leading from the top. We have asked our governors to lead from the ground. The other day I was asking uh, private sector. We were the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce uh, elections. And we said this war against corruption will not be won by government only. We must have private sector on board. We must have the civil society on board. We must have our young people and our women on board for us to win the war against corruption. And we need all hands on deck for us to win the war against corruption. And this touches you as young people. As I said, with the, the AGPO provision of 30%, reserving that public procurement for you as the young people and the women from your counties. I, 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 are, you, are you getting it? I would like to honestly hear from you. I, are you getting your share with your 30%? No. Are, are there any of you who have had uh, uh, AGPO tenders? Maybe by a show of hands. Those of you who have won tenders, AGPO, AGPO, th that, that, that is a very small fraction. Uh, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, once upon a time, I was uh, MP for Saboti. And I brought two bills to the 10th parliament. One of them was for the elderly, about pension, access to pension funds, and about the year of retirement, whether they should be 60 or 55, and whether one could access their pension much earlier. I brought a second bill that uh, I had researched on from South Africa and other jurisdictions about setting aside 25% of our public procurement for our youth. The Minister for Finance then was Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, and he was also Deputy Prime Minister. So he called me to his office and said, uh, Eugene, I've seen your two bills. They are all money bills that will have great implications on our economy. But uh, this one for pension, uh, can we work on this one? So we pushed it, and at the time, uh, uh, the president then and prime minister said, no, we cannot afford 25%. We will try 10%. But President Uhuru told me that time as minister for finance that uh, don't worry, uh, our time is coming when we take over government. And believe me, Eugene, it will not be 25%. We will reserve 30% of public procurement for the youth of our country. True to his word, when President Uhuru Kenyatta took over, amongst the first bills that uh, were passed was the AGPO one. And by 2015, it was operational. And it sets aside 30% of public procurement for you, the young people of this country, and the women and persons with disability. The issue is, they say the truth in the pudding is in the eating. The truth is, from what I'm hearing here, and it's the same thing I saw at the University of Nairobi, very few young people are actually enjoying 
the fruits of, uh, of, uh, of this legislation. Do you know what 30% of our public procurement uh, uh, is? Do you know what we are talking about? We are talking of over 300 billion shillings reserved for you. And our, what we envisioned was to see how we can create entrepreneurship. Many of you who leave universities and tarmac for years may not all get jobs. But through this program, we can turn you from job seekers to job creators. So the issue is how do we work with you to ensure that we make your governors in your counties ensure that you get a share of that pie. This is, some, this, this is an area I want us to engage in so that we see how this can be enhanced. We also work to see how at the national level you can also get your share. The uptake is very limited, I can tell you this. Of the 300 billion, I think the uptake is uh, less than 20%. So we need to see how we can work together to enhance this so that you get fruits of devolution as we devolve the resources to your counties. You get a share of that. I think uh, the biggest business you, you can do is with government. And you don't have to wait for you even to graduate from this university. We have made the ease of doing business the best in Africa. As a country, we were at position 134. When Uhuru Kenyatta took over, we have worked hard to make things easier for you, the young people and the women, and also investors coming in to invest. We have changed the company laws, business registration laws, created Huduma centers, so that it is easy for you to actually go and register your company, even when you are still on campus. Easy for you, even as you leave, as you, before you are employed, to start your company. And we rose in the World Bank ranking of the ease of doing business from position 134 to position 81. As we speak, we are at position 61. And by next year, we are working to see how we can be amongst the top 50 nations in the world in terms of the ease of doing business so that we can get more people investing in our country, but also we can get more investors, local investors, including yourselves, you the young people of our country. We want you to, to, to access this, and we'll keep working with you to ensure that uh, we make it easier for you to be able to, uh, to, to access this food. So let me thank you once more, and uh, thank you, Karen, for inviting me, uh, ELF uh, team, and the Ford Foundation for this forum, and wish you fruitful deliberations. I know Nairobi is very cold, and as the professor said, I think this is the coldest part of Nairobi. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, the energy in this room, you can't feel the cold. I think uh, brimming with ideas. Let us work together and always believe this. As Professor Nasiuma said, our best days are not in the past. Our best days are ahead of us. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you so much.